Welcome back to our orange texture making. I have saved or exported this nice square seamless texture to the desktop. That's a PNG file. We can take a look at it here. Looks really nice. Now to make the vertical cross we're going to be tiling it and I'm choosing to use Inkscape which is one of my favorite pieces of software. Also free and open source like GIMP. So let's drag in our tile. Always say link. If you say embed, it actually saves the image as part of the Inkscape file and it adds some JPEG compression and it actually loses quality. So I always say link, but if something happens to this file, it won't be able to load it in the Inkscape file. So just take note of that. Okay, I'm going to shrink this to 100 by 100, just so it's manageable. And to place things precisely, we're going to use the grid. So I'm going to go here to ob uh, Document Properties and create a new grid. We're going to make it 100 by 100, so it's the same size as our image. Set that to 1. I'm going to make it invisible, but still enabled everywhere I place it, it's going to snap to a perfect tile. Control D makes a copy. And it's very tempting because it's a seamless texture just to do that and claim you're done. But that actually isn't the case because all these tiles are oriented the same way. This is the top. That's the top. And that's the top. The top matches up seamlessly with the bottom. And the left matches seamlessly with the right. So here when we do the folding, this is the left side matching the top side. And that is not going to work. And it's important that we get all of these seams where the folds are going to happen. We get those right. It doesn't matter if these internal seams are wrong because we can always fix those. So because this is the left, we need the right to be on the top. So we're going to grab this, rotate it like so. And we can just see Bring the handle to the corner. We can see that yes indeed that matches up perfectly. You'll notice there's a small skinny line and that is just a very subtle bug in uh, Inkscape. That actually shows up in the render. So we're going to be doing something to take care of that afterwards. Okay, so we got the right side here. We need this left side to be on top. So we're going to rotate that. There we go. I always check just to make sure. It's it would be a shame to get all this way and have things not work. Perfect. So now that this is the left side. So that's the right side, which makes this bottom the new left, or the left the new bottom, I guess you should say, which means this needs to be right. We can do a similar thing to what we did at the top. By the way, I'm pressing control as I rotate to snap it to, I think, 15 degrees. I'm going to grab this one, and there's a quick trick we can do. Press H to flip it horizontally, press V to flip, flip it vertically. And now we see those are seamless. So we can bring these back up. Bring this back up. And now these two match, those two match, these two match, those two match. And the only thing left is this bottom tile, which is okay because the bottom here already is going to match up with the top. 
The only problem is that this left side is going to match up with this, which is a top side. So there's going to be a seam. But we're going to be able to take care of that. It's kind of complicated, but once you do it and actually see our next step, it's going to make sense. So now to take care of these white lines, we're going to make a duplicate of the one of our tiles and then just grow it. And select this so it sends it to the bottom. And I'm going to select our cross. And so we've basically just taken our texture, put it behind to fill in all those gaps. I know this seems like a hack, but this is actually how this is done. There might be sophisticated tools that do all the automatic cross and seamlessness for you, but this is actually what it's doing. And there are people, including myself, who make video games who do stuff like this. And okay, so we're going to export this. 6,000 by 8,000. Yeah, that can, that'll be okay. We'll call this Orange Cross. That might take a while. Inkscape has a funny bug where it only updates the progress bar when the mouse is moving. So if you stop moving the mouse, it stops updating. Then <laughs> kind of weird, but it's no big deal. Okay, let's take a look at our new cross. Looks pretty good. Just a matter of cleaning up these seams, and I'm going to bring it back into GIMP and use the heal tool for this. guessing you don't want to watch me do that, so I'm probably going to cut this part of the video out. Before I do that though, there's a trick in GIMP to make this simpler. When you place your origin, any kind of painting tool you use, once you do your initial placement, you can then hold shift, and this will draw a line. Then you can hold control to actually snap that to specific angles. So you can zip down here, hold both shift and control, and move one click. And it's going to do that whole line for you, but it's going to take a while, probably 15 seconds or so. So uh, I'll see you when this is done. Okay, welcome back. Um, I finished healing all these seams, took a little while, um, but it looks quite good. So we're going to save this, we're going to export it as a TIF. For some reason the default bitmap format uh, does not work with the next piece of software we're going to use. So we're going to go with TIF because it can be uncompressed and saves really quick. Hit no compression, export. There we go, and there is our orange cross. That is, with seams, without. Now we're going to use HDR Shop. HDR Shop is a fairly old piece of software, but it's really good at doing one specific thing. It's also not available on the developer's website anymore for some reason. So I'm going to post some links to other mirrors uh, in the description. The very small self-contained executables. We just grab it, bring in our cross, Press OK. You can middle click and drag to scroll around your image. And then we're going to hit Image Panorama Panoramic Transformation. Here we say our source image is a vertical cross, and our new image is latitude longitude. That is something we want to map to a ball, like a planet. And I'm Pretty sure we have a high enough resolution to do this. Yeah, I think so. Hit OK and let's see what happens. Wonderful! I bet you've never seen a Mercator projection of an orange peel before. There's a first time for everything though. Um, upon close inspection of this, you'll notice there's two seams. 
And those are the seams I mentioned earlier. Because when making our vertical cross, it was this side matching with this side. So it was a left against a top, and those don't match up. But it's okay, that's really simple to fix. We're going to save this. We'll call this orange projection. And once again, oh, you can't open and give like that. Okay. Um, and once again, the healing tool. This will be really quick, though. Because we're dealing with a lower resolution now, we can pick a smaller brush, and it's actually a more reasonable speed. And just like that, we're done. That is our completed spherical orange texture. I'm going to end the video here, and in the next one, we're going to actually apply it to Sphere in Unity. See you then.